Hey everybody, today we are going to talk about anger, why it exists and how we can better manage it. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Make sure you are subscribed and have your notifications turned on so that you don't miss out on any new videos. Now today, we have a very special guest. My friend and artist Shayla Maddox is going to be painting anger as I talk about it. Super cool. Also maybe super hard. Mm -hmm. But she uses art as a way to process her emotions. But when preparing for this video, she shared, it's kind of like me, I don't really like anger. Well, it's kind of scary. Anger is scary and it's kind of ugly and dark and weird and I really like to paint things that make me happy so having to face anger sometimes is really kind of difficult for me. And I thought what a great way to learn about anger together. Each of us using the tips and tools that have helped us in the past. Her using art, me overthinking it, doing some research so I can better understand it. So Follow along with us as she paints what I'm talking about and as I teach you more about anger and why it has to exist. And hopefully we will all become a little bit more friendly with our anger because we all have it. We just have to get to know it better so that we can have a healthy relationship with it. And I will link all of Shayla's socials in the description. She has a Patreon, so you can yes. go check that out as well. Go check it all out. <laughs> She's wonderful and I love what she does. Now let's just get into it. Thanks, Katie. As you know, anger is often a secondary emotion, meaning it's used to protect us from something else that we're feeling. Things such as humiliation, hurt, feeling scared, rejected, or honestly anything that's really difficult for us to admit that we feel. Anger can seem a lot safer than those emotions. Like when we're asked what's going on or how we're feeling, we can confidently say, I feel angry. Or even if we aren't actually comfortable feeling angry or saying it out loud, we can stew in it instead of admitting to ourselves that we're actually very hurt. In other words, whether we express our anger outwardly or not, it's still there and more comfortable than the primary emotion. For the most part, anger exists as a way for us to get out of any threatening situation and survive. That's why when we feel vulnerable, hurt, or humiliated, for example, anger pops up and distracts us. It senses the threat of more hurt or upset and jumps out to protect us. And if you hadn't guessed this already, anger is triggered by our amygdala. You know, that part of the brain that's responsible for our fight, flight, or freeze response. That's why anger can often feel very out of control to us. When I asked you on Instagram what you wanted me to talk about, so many of you replied with, how can I better control my anger? Or how can I healthfully express it? And I'll be honest, I don't even have a very good relationship with anger. In fact, a lot of my current therapy is focused on this very emotion. I know anger needs to exist, but I don't like it. And in my mind, the word anger is like a kind of dirty word, like I said to Shayla. I don't like it. I'm a people pleaser. I hate conflict. And I have tried all sorts of things to healthfully express it, as my therapist said, like screaming in my car, writing it out, talking about it with my therapist and friends. I've tried it all. And I'm gonna be honest with you. It does help a little bit when it's something small that I'm angry about, but not when it's something big. That kind of big anger just feels really scary and out of control to me. The reason anger can feel so out of control is because our amygdala is like a tantruming toddler. It doesn't care who it upsets or if what it's doing is embarrassing or how it should act, like what's appropriate. It doesn't care about that. It only cares that it's upset and it wants to express it. And this could be flipping someone off when they cut us off on the road or screaming at a loved one because they've done something that was really hurtful. We can't allow the tantruming toddler to run the show. Obviously, that would be chaos. But we also can't stuff it down and pretend like it doesn't exist. In order to not let anger run and pretty much ruin our lives, we have to allow our wise mind, otherwise known as the prefrontal cortex, have a say in it. 
The prefrontal cortex is the part of our brain that considers consequences, thinks through our options, and thoughtfully decides on an action. We could call this the adult part of our brain, but we all know that just because we're adults doesn't mean we make good decisions. So let's just call this the healthy control center. And in order to activate this part of our brain, we have to pay more attention to how we are feeling. I know it's uncomfortable, but think about it. How does anger feel to us? Hmm, where does it start? Like for me, I feel anger in my face first. I know that's weird, but this is just me. I find myself clenching my teeth and I won't want to meet someone's gaze. Like if I'm mad, I'm like, ugh, I just, ugh, I just don't even want to look at them. And I want to shout. I'll feel it in my throat like I want to shout. But instead, I'll just find myself swallowing hard and kind of waiting for that angry feeling to pass. Remember, just because I'm a therapist doesn't mean I'm perfect, not at all. It honestly just means that I know when I'm screwing it up. Okay, next, we have to be a detective. You know how much I love being a detective? To find out what it was that set us off. And this is the hardest part, what's the primary emotion that our anger is hiding. Remember at the beginning, I said it's usually secondary, it's hiding something else. And I, I know this can be really hard and it can take a lot of thought and journaling or even many therapy sessions to figure it out. But in my experience, the more that we do it, the easier it gets. And finally, once we have done those things, we have to try out a new way of expressing what we felt. For example, Let's say we're hurt. Can we tell that to the person who hurt us? If it's safe, obviously, but maybe we can let them know that what they said hurt our feelings or that that's why we shouted at them. And I know this is hard, but communicating this can only improve our relationships because the people who will listen and try to work with us are the ones that are worth having in our lives. And the ones that blow up on us or won't listen at all, like they shouldn't be in our lives anyways. So it's really a win-win. I also heard from a lot of you that you stuff your anger down. Like I said, I'm very guilty of this too. And so you wanted to learn how to stop doing that, that stuffing. Remember I said I swallow hard and I wanna learn too. So I did some research and what I learned is that when we stuff down our anger, that not only takes away our sense of self, but it also makes healthy boundaries impossible. And this was mind blowing to me. But if I really take the time to think about it, and maybe you'll agree with this, we know that's true. When we pretend we aren't angry, we aren't allowing our true feelings and self to be seen or heard. Therefore, no one in our lives really knows how to treat us or what we want or don't want and what's okay with us. Anger is a great indicator of what's okay and not okay. And one of the ways that we can know if our boundaries are being crossed. And I've talked about this a lot in the past when trying to explain you know, how to set up healthy boundaries because a lot of you have asked about that over the years. So if we aren't even allowing anger into our lives at all, we can find ourselves getting walked all over or always doing what other people want and slowly losing our sense of self. And after reading about this and just considering it, I could even see this leading to cognitive dissonance, meaning that the way we're acting isn't in line with who we believe ourselves to be. It doesn't agree with it. But what do you think? Do you agree or disagree with that? Why or why not? Do you think that not allowing anger into our lives makes boundaries more difficult or our true sense of self, like we kind of get lost in it? Let me know in the comments. And just like we talked about earlier, in order to have anger in our lives in a healthy way, we have to start to get to know it. I know, it's kind of scary, but we have to know how it feels in our body and in our mind what sorts of things tend to trigger it? And most importantly, what emotions does it try to hide for us? Because if I'm being honest, after all of my work and therapy on this particular topic, 
I've learned that my anger usually comes from one of two places. One being if someone hurts someone that I love. I'm very protective and I definitely like mama bear situations where if I don't feel like someone's voice is being heard, I will make sure the other person hears it. So that one was kind of easy for me to figure out. That's just how I've always been my whole life. But the harder one for me to, to pinpoint was that I get angry when I don't feel important or valued. Like if someone doesn't show up for me the way that they said they would or isn't reliable, I am triggered big time. And it can be hard for me to express that in a real way without either shouting or shutting down. So I journal about it and I do my best to communicate my need for consistency with those that I care about. But trust me, it's still very much a work in progress. Just like this painting. But what are some things that you are doing to better understand and manage your anger? Oh, and I also want to mention that we can all work together to change the way we talk about anger. Instead of treating it like it's a dirty or bad emotion, how about we just talk about it in the same way we would talk about being excited or happy or whatever? Because anger is really just another emotion but it does have a very important role in our lives and in our mental health. Now let's go check out our painting, see how it's coming along. Ooh, I Hi. love it. Hi, this is so cool. Okay, I'm not very artistic, just That's spoilers. Fine. So you don't have to be very artistic to do um, my type of art because it's all very intuitive, it's very emotional. And as you can see while you were talking, um, I just took a lot of words and emotions mm -hmm. from what you were saying and the things that it made me feel uh, mm -hmm. broken hearted. Um, just a lot of, when I feel angry, I feel like scratching yes, out so same. much of my life, my journal, you know, my drawings. And um, so that's always very important to me. Um, I like the idea of starting a painting and I call it ugly. I even wrote the word ugly. Mm -hmm. I kind of utilize that. I take the pressure off of me and say, you know what, I'm just going through some stuff and I'm going to get it all out there. It doesn't really matter what it looks like because this is just Because that's the hard me. part because I'm like a perfectionist. So I'll be like, Absolutely. oh, this didn't work out. Oh, scrap the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wouldn't be able to do that and stop there um, if uh, I continued to want to like sell the painting and post it online. True. That's the problem True. for me. Um, so it's good to get all the emotion out, but when I want to show people and want to kind of finish an artwork as an artist, I can't leave it like this. It's really uncomfortable for me to leave all of these angry words and mm -hmm. these negative thoughts. And um, in my mind, though it was intentional, to kind of make it ugly. Um, and then, so then that makes me uncomfortable. So then at this point um, in my art, I have to make it pretty. Okay, and how do we so do And so we're gonna use some blue. Okay. We just have blue paint. Okay. And you basically just paint whatever you want. There's some white space left, you can make little marks. Um, Cause part of me is like, what if we make the heart pretty even though it's broken? You can do that too, that's perfect. I start to make happy faces instead of the oh, unhappy yeah. faces. And it's just now about kind of making pretty colors. And this kind of one of the things I was doing by representing the, the yellow and the blue. Um, to have one, it's very kind of empty. Mixing them together, like being able to add the blue color, yellow and blue makes green. Now we've got a third beautiful color mm -hmm. that didn't exist before. And yeah. personally, I don't think that that true creativity can happen unless we are exploring all of the emotions, both the beautiful ones and the ugly ones. No, I love that. It reminds me, did you watch Inside Out? Yes. When sadness touches all that stuff. Yeah. And she's like, no, 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 Joy's like, you're ruining it. <laughs> but then she sees that it's like, it's not actually just sadness, it's like right. nostalgia. It's like yes. missing things and that's okay to, because yeah. missing things means that you had love or excitement or right. enjoyment at the time. Right. Yeah. It's. I love it. We get so caught up in ourselves, like just being cynical and, and getting stuck with our own anger that mm -hmm. um, almost it feels better to keep the anger even than to let it go, I think, sometimes. It's really hard mm -hmm. for me to, um, I think like I feel entitled to be angry sometimes yeah. and I don't want to let it go. I want to hold on to it for a little while. Well, and it's fair to let yourself, you're letting yourself process it yeah. because the goal like of the video is not to feel like I feel anger, I understand it, I let it go. It, that This could take a few months right. or it could take a year if it's a really deep, 
wound right. that we're trying to heal. Um, but that doesn't have to like run our lives. It can just be something that's like, I like to say percolating in the back. It's just hanging out. Right. We're trying to understand it. Right. Trying to put more words to it. Layers. Yes. It's all about layers. There's so much beauty in the negative emotions and I'm trying to just embrace that. Yeah, I love this. This makes art feel more accessible to me. <laughs> Cause I was always like, I, I, I don't, I can't do that. <laughs> That's why it's fun just to make colors. Mm -hmm. And then we're pretty much done. I mean, yay! It's pretty. It's looking pretty already. And then I'll just finish it up and wonderful. We can see what it looks like in the dark. Yay! <laughs> I know all of her paintings glow in black light. That's mm -hmm. an extra bonus. It's like a little gift inside the painting that I give myself. Mm -hmm. and it's then like we a wait secret. To see what happens. So you don't know, but it's gonna come out here in a second. I'll see it soon. All of your art has this extra added layer of like how it reacts to light? Like light in black reactive, light? Yeah, yeah. I, it reacts to all forms of light. Um, I like to have a painting that not only shows its colors in the daytime, but also when it's night and you turn out the lights too. So the black light actually brings out a lot of the UV ultraviolet colors that we can't see with our normal eyes that requires this extra light. That's so cool. It's like it's a, a separate secret hidden painting inside the other painting. Yeah, it's like two in one. Yeah. You get like this extra little surprise. If you didn't know, it'd be, you know what I mean? It's right. kind of cool, like, ooh, this was so fun to do. Thank you for coming by. Thank you sharing, for having me. Sharing your talent. Loves making art with you. Yeah, same. It made me feel like I could actually maybe create art. Well, you're a creative <laughs> person, so. <laughs>